I'm thinking about cos um, consciousness a bit and cosmology a bit. Not so much, at least I think I would call it cosmology, but these ideas about the big picture. And particularly authors like Ken Wilber, or Abindo, um, Aldous Huxley, perennial philosophy stuff, there was uh, Spiral Dynamics, Teilhard de Chardin, that kind of modern mystical stuff, or not so modern mystical stuff. Because I really like that kind of writing, I love it. I mean, I regard it as poetry, but I really like it. And I enjoy the effect of reading it, and I enjoy the pleasures I get from reading it. Um, I'm just wondering what the significance of those things are. Because it seems to me that um, that those you know, those are explanatory systems. Those ex they explain, they give the big picture either of uh, ourselves or of the, some aspect of the universe or some aspect of our relationship between ourselves and the universe, about the role of consciousness in that relationship. You know, they make those um, they make those kind of statements. And they're very, and some of them at least, are very convincing. Certainly, when I read some of that stuff, I do get that very st strong sense of that kind of dawning awareness. You know, I do get that great sense of closure where you think, "Oh yeah, right, God, yeah, of course, yeah, that's it." Perennial philosophy, yeah, got it. Um, and I get that, but I, but I don't trust that feeling. I have to say, I don't trust it. You know, it it, it shouldn't be that easy. It shouldn't be that easy. I feel like uh, a character in one of those detective stories. You know, where two thirds of the way through the movie, or two thirds of the way through the book, all the strands come together, and the the sidekick to the detective said, "Well, it seems like we just wrapped that up. That was easy," and the detective says, "Ah, yes, too easy." It reminds me a bit like that. You know, it shouldn't be that easy. We shouldn't. You know, we are uh, barely evolved primates living on a speck of dust in the in some galaxy amidst a billion other galaxies. I think I'm probably quoting from that fantastic video that uh, the Corrupts loaded a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, so so and, you know, what would, why on earth would we be able to understand something as complex as those things to do with the cosmos and our relationship to it and consciousness and all that stuff? How would we, by what mechanism would that become available to us? And, and particularly easily, you know, I mean the. Uh, I mean, the thing about those books that I mentioned, the Wilbur and the, the Spiral Dynamic stuff, is it, it's pretty easy stuff, really. You know what I mean? Some of the language is, is phrased a bit tricky, and some of the, um, you know, some, there's some long words in it. But basically, it's not, it's not hard. You can't read most of that stuff without, you know, a, a fantastic education or, or being super bright. Uh, and quite honestly, even if you are super bright, I'm not sure it would help. But, um, so it's not really that hard. It's just, it's just too easy. You know, or a bindo, it's just too to out of shadow, it's too easy. I get through that and I love the feeling it gives in me, but it's too easy. And I suppose I would want to contrast that with somebody like, or with some of the things that uh, somebody like Richard Feynman says. You know, he's, he, he says this thing about quantum physics, which is very famous, uh, to which uh, Richard Dawkins quotes on one of his lectures. He says, you know, if you think you understand quantum physics, then you don't understand quantum physics. And, and that's a really profound thing to say, because what he's saying there is, if, if you've read quantum physics and you get it, you get that felt sense of knowing, that felt, that, that ah, got it, ah, right, ah, got it, that sense of revelation and enlightenment that you do get from reading Aurobindo or from um, any of the other people I've already mentioned. If you get that from, from quantum physics, then you've missed something, because it shouldn't make those kind of appeals. It shouldn't make those kind of human-scale appeals to satisfactory logic and, uh, and human-scale understanding and neatly closed arguments and, and all the threads coming together in this big revelatory ball. It shouldn't do that. And if it's doing that for you, you've misunderstood it. Um, you know, knowledge of the universe should be really, really hard. It should at, the, at least require a serious education in something like physics to even begin scratching the surface of the complexity of that. You shouldn't be able to pick it up in an afternoon with a copy of a, of a Ken Wilber book. That shouldn't give you the kind of insights. It might give you some nice feelings about it. And I think that, you know, I don't want to, just, I don't want to um, undervalue the importance of those kind of feelings and, and the particular kind of um, comfort. Now that sounds like pejorative as well, but a particular kind of relationship that that kind of thing 
gives you. But it's, I don't think it's the same as understanding. I think understanding is different. Uh, I think it's hard one if it's one at all. And I think we would have to accept, and in a lot of cases, it's impossible to win. If you think you understand the universe, you don't understand the universe. If you think you understand consciousness, you don't understand consciousness. Yeah, I think that's probably fair to say. And if you get those warm, fuzzy feelings of understanding, particularly if somebody like, I hate to pick on this guy again, but I'm going to have to, particularly if somebody like uh, Andrew Cohen is, is offering these solutions to you and you do get this warm glow of, ah, this guru has told me, I understand it all now, then that's probably a warning signal that you are being closed down and uh, you need to work harder to find more stuff out. <laughs>